Like this is this is the actual clip right here. So this is where he actually mentions the the Tesla thing. Let me just say this here. In the business of delivering, you know, you could ask him, you know, will you stop using Palantir because he just because Carp is going to support Ukraine. You know, I will use the. Okay, so that's it. That was the sentence I think everyone is thinking of a lot. I personally think he's using it as a hypothetical, as a metaphor. He's not actually saying um, Elon's using Palantir. But what were your guys' thoughts on that? I mean, my my interpretation is uh, I believe uh, somehow they use it because uh, in the same way, Carp recognizing, okay, Elon Musk uh, is a great entrepreneur we deal with what he does because uh, what he does is the best. I think that is uh, extended on the other way around uh, from Mark, Max, uh, Mark's uh, Musk perspective. Uh, we may not agree 100% on certain things, uh, but we recognize you are the top. So that sounds very reasonable to me. So I would say I'm not certain uh, the probability of actually that to be true increased, uh, but uh, be that or not, uh, does it really change for us? Yeah, probably not. And I mean, when I heard this the first time, I also thought he's definitely using it as a hypothetical. He's not actually saying Elon. he's trying to make the whole free speech case. Matt, any thoughts on what he said on that? Yeah, I thought it was a hypothetical as well, but I'm also very certain that, you know, Peter... And in Elon, I've had a very extensive relationship. Uh, Palantir was started just a few months after they sold PayPal together. And so I wouldn't be surprised if, um, you know, Tesla or, or any other Elon Musk company wasn't utilizing uh, Palantir. But, you know, a lot of times these partnerships get ke uh, kept in the dark for quite some time. But I think he was more so using it as a uh, acknowledgement that, you know, Alex and, and Elon are both very intelligent folks and, and come from the entrepreneur sort of mindset. And so I think with that, they respect each other and they respect their, each other's kind of expertise and areas of expertise. And I think that that's what he's referring to. I think the problem that Palantir runs into is they enter organizations that think of using Palantir software as a typical conventional piece of software. And in reality, Palantir is there to help change the way that you do things. And I think that's very scary for most organizations. Um, and so what I think Alex is kind of referring to here is <clears throat> when people are saying, you know, telling a doctor that they're wrong or they don't believe in what a doctor says, they still use them. I think that that might particularly be based off of, you know, what people do now, which is they might try to align a Google with the left party or a Facebook or Zuckerberg with with the Democrats. And, and so they might say don't, not use that. And then same thing with what they might be doing with Palantir with respect to the supporting the Ukraine war and being like, well, I don't really support any war. So why would I get involved whatsoever uh, with this sort of company? But I think, um, hey, Mr. Sachin, how are you, man? Um, good to see you. It's been a while. The the uh, thing that I would think that, you know, what what he's trying to refer to is, is a lot of companies will say, ah, we don't need your help. We know what we're doing. But it's like, well, if that's the case, why would you call us up in the damn first place? Right. You're obviously recognizing some sort of inefficiencies or ability to, um, you know, put yourself in the right direction and digitalize your organization. But then you're sitting here being like, ah, oh, we think we know better, you know, the, when you've been struggling to make products and get replaced legacy products get replaced that took you five years to make and they get replaced in three weeks. Like that sort of shit is what Palantir has to deal with is these egotistical people that don't respect that these guys aren't coming from a, Hey, we know more about oil and gas or Hey, we know more about flying planes than you. They're here to say, we know how to organize data. We know how to help bring data in and give you the right opportunities to make the right decisions on your own and build software specifically for what your expertise is, let us help you. And that's a different way to sell software than any other place that I've sort of seen, um, you know, in 10 years of, of working in, in industry. And so anyway, uh, long tangent to say, I'm pretty certain that Elon's using some of the products, but um, I don't think that that's what he was referring to, meaning Alex referring to specifically in that uh, clip.
Okay, Sachin, thank you for joining with the Big Daddy glasses as always. What was your take on Carp doing this kind of, uh, will you tell Elon to stop using Palantir if he disagrees with me? Do you think that was kind of a Freudian slip? Do you think there's actually some relationship there? Or do you think just pure hypothetical, nothing too serious? So I don't think that was hypothetical because uh, that uh, example he made was very direct. You don't make that kind of direct example because uh, it can be implied in sort of relationship and SCC can sue you. And the kind of uh, scrutiny that uh, uh, Ilan and both Alex Clark guess, you know, gets all the time. I don't think that was just a hypothetical reference. It was a clear reference. Okay. So Wait, why, you... why would the SEC sue? What's the reasoning for that? See, SEC will, so SEC will not sue you. Somebody will complain to SEC that by saying that you implied you have a strategic ah. relationship which doesn't exist and then SEC does it. And it has happened a lot of time. And the kind yes. of yardstick that these companies go through Okay, it's uh, and it was very clear reference. And more important than that, I mean, if you see the body language of these two people who were sitting together and uh, they were very comfortable, the way they were talking, uh, they, I cannot say it's just a pure coincidence that they decided to keep these two people sit together. They must have asked some some preference. Let's so, let's hear it one more time. Let's do it one more time, and then Sachin, I'll let you continue just to get a little bit more context here. Thirty seconds here. Best surgeon. You still go to them. And I, I look, I know Elon. I, 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 I like him. I think he's a super important entrepreneur. We don't have to agree on everything. His products work. I, I am in the business of delivering. You know, you could ask him, you know, will you stop using Palantir because he just because Carp is going to support Ukraine? You know, I will use. Okay, maybe it's uh maybe it's such in talking before hearing it, but after such in talk, now I'm like maybe they are fucking working together. <laughs> so the idea no, is that uh, if uh, this was uh, false, Carp could be vulnerable to a sec accusation, uh, which uh, implies uh, if he is he doesn't want to be fraudulent, uh, that needs to be true because if that is actually true, he can't be pursued uh, by the S sec. Right. Yeah, basically, Sachin, what you're saying is someone can go to the SEC, say, I invested in Palantir because CARP implied on national television they have a That's true. partnership. And, and guys, you need to remember, I was on the part of the side where I was writing these kind of statements for people to speak in press at times. Mm. So, like, when you are declaring about a new partnership, what it will imply, what it will not imply, how SEC. So, I have done that a couple of times. So, have some awareness. Okay, so my interpretation of it is there was a clear indication that Elan or one of the Elan's company, which could be anything, which could be Boring, which could be Neuralink, which could be SpaceX. SpaceX makes more sense because see, SpaceX has a different level of sensitivity and more closer integration with government, which is already a very big client of Palantir. So, but that was a very clear hint. He has never given that kind of clear hint. A lot of time he will just say that I will not say Okay, or we cannot say or we cannot discuss about client. They are very clear about it. And he made a very, very direct reference. So to me, one of the Elon Musk company is actually using Palantir in one way or other way. Mm -hmm. Now, now you made me pop a, a thought. Wasn't a C3 AI CEO actually being accused of saying uh, false uh, things uh, in the earnings call that made the people thinking... Uh, the so, company was doing better yeah. than the reality. And you know, there are there are there are companies in US who only feeds on this. They only try to look through the statement, then they will do a class action lawsuits. I mean, uh, yeah. this is a yeah, yeah. this is a bread and butter butter business for a lot of people. So so my understanding is that's a very clear indication. Now, what was more important? I think uh, everyone has to have a reality check here. Is See, there was no Frank Slootman in that meeting. There was no um, Tom Siebel. Actually, nobody even asked Tom Siebel about it, who has a stock taker <laughs> of AI. Okay. So a lot of time people say, like, I mean, that famous guy, that BR cave, uh, hopefully. Edwin. My yeah, guy. that that, that uh, he's short Coca-Cola now. He's going against Buffett. That's his newest report. Yeah. So I think what he needs, he needs to get a job and he needs to first understand <laughs> how companies actually work. Let me be very honest, because uh, it's getting ridiculous at times. OK, so he said Palantir as an AI imposter. Now, how an AI imposter and 
and that's an ai imposter which has been a clear target of democratic government and democratic administration that guy is actually sitting in the meeting with everyone who is clearly a 500 billion plus kind of a company or a 100 billion plus kind of a person in its him, himself okay so if people don't understand that uh, is it a good enough proof for being imposter or not uh, I, i'm really sorry I mean, like, I, i'm really surprised when people say that they don't understand what palantir does i mean they should be ashamed on themselves there is a lot of information there is a lot of aip con foundry con there is a lot of testimony that is available there is a lot mm-hmm. of tutorials that are available uh, on, on youtube and if people don't understand that uh, yeah i think uh, they should and- be simply ashamed of themselves